Charlie Stripling and his brother Ira were born in Pickens County, way out in the country in West Alabama. Their father had a little store, but of course everybody farmed. I mean, you couldn't live without farming. He was interested enough in fiddling to order a toy fiddle for uh, a nephew. He tuned it up and he said, I already knew how to tune it. So apparently, I think he had watched real closely and even maybe tried to play it. He figured out that I can do this. He got somebody to sell him a real fiddle for a dollar and Ira bought himself a six dollar guitar, brand new, and they became the famous Stripling Brothers. When the Striplings were living in Pickens County, there was a family within a mile of them that was full of fiddlers, and that was the Carroll family. One of them was Plez Carroll, and that's short for Pleasant. He was born in 1850, and he played real old archaic tunes. I think that Charlie Stripling must have gone over and listened to them a lot. Here's an example of a, of a community of fiddlers that lived a mile away from him who were good. Dad always said that it was a talent that God gave him, and he didn't make any bones about it. He just knew how to play the fiddle. And I think, honestly, not just talking about my dad, but I honestly think that he had the greatest ear for music of any fiddler I can think of. And he was so young then, but did you notice his little bow tie? He was a handsome guy. That's what Miss uh, the lady that worked at the Gazette told me. She said folks fell for him just like they did Elvis Presley. People would come like on the weekends, on Saturday night, or, and we would, they would start playing music and people in the neighborhood could hear it and then they would all start coming in, you know, to listen. They'd come from everywhere, Pickens County. They love them down in Pickens County. And we'd go to church sometimes at, the, at Mount Zion and on our way home, we'd stop two or three places and make music for people. Oh, they, they, just, they just loved them dearly. Charlie Stripling was a local hero, I would say, because he, he played great music and they liked that. He had a good character and people revered him for that too. Ira actually stopped during the Depression, I think. I think um, they recorded in 1936 and after that, I think he didn't play with them anymore. His place was taken by Charlie Stripling's two young sons. One day my my mother came in and a, a railroad man left a Gibson guitar and a Gibson man in there and she said, hey, you take the man and let your brother take the heat bigger, take the guitar. I'm going to, on the organ here, teach you the chords to the little brown jug. When dad got in one night and she asked him to get the fiddle and play uh, little brown jug and he got the fiddle and we played that with him. She'd already taught us the rhythm and and everything, so, and he was amazed, and that started our career. I think that was probably pretty exciting for Charlie, and very quickly, I think he also saw the utility in it, because it was really only a, a few months later, after that first day, that they accompanied him in his first fiddle contest, and I believe they won that one. They would um, sit there late at night playing the guitar and the mandolin backing him up and um, playing at fiddlers conventions and all. And I think that was part of the charm too, you know, this real good fiddler with these two children who were doing a good job playing. I remember seeing them just sit there and play and play and play and see them get so tired. This was pretty late at night and Lee was only eight or nine years old and his feet didn't even reach the ground from the chair. and. So at, from time to time he would doze off and when he did Charlie would reach over and tap him on the head with his fiddle bow and wake him up again. To... Lee and Robert accompanied their dad at fiddle contests and dances for about 10 years and that came to an end in the late 30s when a better opportunity presented itself and that was for Lee and Robert to go off to the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps, which was one of the New Deal programs specifically aimed at helping rural teenagers. They got four meals a day and they worked six days a week. Lee and Robert both continued in the CCC straight up to the time that they entered the service for the war effort. In Lee's case, he was stationed in the Northwest here in Seattle and it was during the war that he met Lucille, fell in love, and the war ended. And when Lucille agreed to marry Lee, uh, that's how Lee wound up in Seattle, I think in 1946 or 47. After Lucille died, 
he was so sad then when he started playing music again he was cheered up he was a different person and, and I was so happy that he started doing that he was looking for a way to keep going really after she'd gone and, and music was that way for him out there among the when Joyce told me that one of the sons of one of the bro Strippen brothers was in Seattle, I had to come find out about it, and uh, I looked him up. She called me and came over one night. I brought out my dad's LP record there. And I said, oh, Lee, I know all about that record. I know 150 people in Seattle who own that record and have learned all the tunes on it. That lit him up. <laughs> So after that, I invited him to come play on my radio show, and which has a lot of old-time music listeners who knew the Stripling Brothers, and so I kind of consider it, of 13 years of having that show, it was kind of a grand coup that I got to present him to the Seattle audience. When Lee Edwin sent me a CD of the trio, the new CD they had made, I made coffee and came out on the deck and turned the stereo up real loud and played that CD all the way through. It does make me feel good to hear them play this music. I think it's great. I just love it. I love old time music and one reason because it, it plays up the history of our families and our country and the, and the music itself. There, there are so many different kinds of music. I like all good music. Old time music is something that we want to preserve. It's so different from modern music that's accessible, really accessible to people. And I just think it's, um, we don't want to lose that. You know, their music has been lost. And we don't want to lose this. It was just heavenly music. That's just, that's the way I described that his music was heavenly. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, oh, now